Hello and welcome back to my weekly reviews of the new season of Twin Peaks. Today I'm going to be reviewing part 9, which was a return to regularity for the series. Beware of spoilers, make sure you've seen the episode before watching, etc. We kick things off by catching up with Doppelganger Coop, who seems unchanged after his revival. As he gets cleaned up, sends a cryptic text, and orders Tim Roth's character Hutch to first kill the prison warden and then two other people in Las Vegas. Meanwhile, the FBI discovers Doppel Coop has escaped prison and go to visit the police in Dakota about Major Briggs's body and Will Hastings' connection to everything. And Diane receives the previously mentioned text from Doppel Coop. In Las Vegas, the police interview Dougie Coop's boss about the assassination attempt discover that Dougie Coop has no records before 1997, trick him into giving them his fingerprints and DNA, and later arrest Ike the Spike. Back in Twin Peaks, Johnny Horn appears to have killed himself by running headfirst into a wall, and Bobby, Hawk and Truman uncover a secret note left by Major Briggs, which contains some rather foreboding instructions. Oh, and deep breath, Andy and Lucy bicker over the colour of a new armchair, Ben Horn continues to search for the source of that mysterious sound and rejects Beverly's advances, Jerry continues to trip out and thinks his leg has turned against him, and a couple of girls chat about work in the Bang Bang Bar. It's no real surprise, but this was certainly a big change of pace from part 8. There was also a lot of plot advancement, things are really starting to come together, and it doesn't seem like it's going to be too long before many of these disparate threads collide in dramatic fashion. I absolutely loved everything about the scenes concerning Bobby and Major Briggs. It was exciting, narratively satisfying, and had one hell of an emotional wallop thanks in no small part to both Dana Ashbrook and Charlotte Stewart. All the stuff with the FBI and Buckhorn was great too. Diane and Albert made their usual hilarious first impressions, with the latter even meeting a kindred spirit, and it was really intriguing watching them connect the dots between the different cases. I was so glad to see Matthew Lillard back as Will Hastings, and he, once again, stole the entire show with his moving, creepy, and somehow also hilarious confession scene. Jerry's continued freak out in the woods was as hilarious and weird as always, and the detectives Fusco were great offbeat fun. Dougie Coop's brief scene this week was fantastic, partly because it wasn't played for laughs, but also because McLaughlin does so much here with so little. It was also great seeing Tim Roth finally appear, and that shot of the sun coming through the trees above the sheriff's department was beautiful. Part 9 was a lot like part 7, but whereas in part 7 we were long overdue for some plot resolution and concrete narrative momentum, in part 9 it all feels a bit flat. A lot of the information conveyed wasn't new, and the rest was a bit paint by numbers. Again, unlike part 7, which had some really creepy moments or arresting camera work, there was little to make this episode stand out. There are also several scenes that just didn't do much for me. For example, the scene of Ben and Beverly, Gordon and Diane sharing a smoke, or the scene in the Bang Bang Bar. Another thing that bugged me is that we finally get an explanation from Dougie Coop's boss about why it is exactly that no one's alarmed at his childlike behaviour. Whilst it made a sort of sense, it would have been far, far more satisfying to have been given this information sooner. All these issues come back to the same major one I've had throughout a lot of this season. It seems overlong and poorly edited together. As usual on Twin Peaks, when one question is answered, another two appear. Doppel Coop tasks Hutch with a double header in Vegas, but who is he referring to? Surely one is Dougie Coop, but who is the other? Janie E? Duncan Todd? Is Johnny Horn dead? And if so, will this be the inciting incident that brings Audrey into the frame? There's also a ton of stuff going on with Briggs this week. What will happen when the police follow his instructions in two days time? Why was he being chased in the first place? What exactly happened to him when his head disattached? And why was Dougie's ring put inside his body? But most perplexingly, was Diane anticipating that text from Doppel Coop? And if so, what does that say about their relationship? Part 9 was far from the worst episode of the season, but it was definitely a step down from the previous two, so I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. But what did you think of Part 9? Let me know in the comments below, and make sure to subscribe, like and share, and tune in next week for my review of the next episode. Thank <laughs> you.